Bro, so thank you for coming on. DJ Spaz, the one and only. Um, I don't know if I would have thought that I'd be having you on so soon. You know what I mean? I feel like, um, well, I want to thank you. Thank you for coming on so soon and no for coming on without, you know, I only have like, what, four or five episodes out. And uh, you didn't wait for me to have like 20 episodes, 30 episodes before you came on. You answered the call right away and uh, you said, let's do it. So thank you, man. Uh, the, the call is appreciated. So quality. What's up, son? Yeah, absolutely. Seriously, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Of course, man. Well, I, I think you're like an important figure in in our community. <laughs> Depends on who you ask, right? So Sure, sure. I mean, that um, that has its part, but you are. You are. Uh, you, you brought us. I know I was talking to my sisters, and they used to go to your parties, and I started going to your parties from, well, at 21. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. Once, Once upon, upon a time, a time yeah. I started going to your parties, and I still do. Um, so... I mean, when when the younger generation, or when all we had was folklore and you know meeting each other at folklore, mm -hmm. and you know the dance Saturday night dances or whatever that was our place to go out or hang out, but you know with your parties you gave us a place to to go out and kind of be ourselves without having the adults around. So for I mean for that reason you brought like I went to Bellwood. Right, mm -hmm. so I have my friends from Bellwood, sure. But because of the dances Saturday night and also your parties, you helped me kind of um, meet a lot more other people Good. that are Serbian and and living in Chicago. Well, that's the goal, right? Absolutely. The stronger we are, uh, stronger and united. That's the goal. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to have you on, man. I think you're, uh, like I said, you're you're important. So. Thank you. I, I want you, I want people to kind of hear your story and get to know you a little bit because we hear about DJ Spaz, but I don't think we know DJ Spaz. I've known you for, well, known highs right, and right. bys, no, right? Not of, not of no. Yeah. But uh, so I'm excited to have you on and to kind of get to know each other. Look, I I wish you much luck with your podcast. I uh, hope that this turns out to be everything you wanted it to be. Uh, you've been very kind through the years. You're you've come you've supported that's huge on my part mm -hmm. and uh you've always known how to say hi as much as it doesn't matter you've been courteous enough to be respectful and i it if i could pay it back i want to so and i really thank you man. And, and i want it to uh blow up in your favor right i want it i want it to work for you and hopefully this can help you my goal is is to help you uh attain yours mm -hmm. and if I can do that by coming to your show early on, mm -hmm. and that's the goal. Well, thank right. you. Zašto Zašto yes, that's the Yes, mo. That's the goal. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. Yeah. So, iskreno, iskreno ti kažem when I say this. I'm not playing. No, I, I, uh, I, I mean, we already, we already sat down and we talked. Yeah. Um, so, Preliminary. <laughs> that's right. So, um, I mean, thank you, man. Cool. Thank you. And you know, I'm not having you on for me to get followers. I mean, that's a benefit, that's, right? That's, those are perks, right? Those are perks. I'm having you on. You might lose a few people. Yeah, I, I might. Mean, man, you know, video. Look, with all the pussy. Skida Olga. Olga. You're right. You're right. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to lose. I'm only going to gain. Tell me your story about how you got into DJing and when did you want to know or when did you know you wanted to kind of be being that um, business or so entertainment th yeah right so that that's interesting right so this started you know back when i was in elementary school right so but what i wanted to be was a radio disc jockey mm -hmm. and we're talking american fm radio okay right b96 at the time uh -huh. and i wanted to be a host right i wanted to do b96 radio yeah and, and that industry at the time was it was very competitive and it's not what you know. Of course, it's what you know, but it's also who you know. Right. All right. So, and then, you know, there's, you know, there's a process of getting into these places and whatnot. But, you know, um, somehow th through whatever channel we went to, uh, we happened to go to Tesla Travel at the time. My, me and my dad, though. Uh -huh. Right. And uh, me and my grandfather would go to Tesla to pick up plane tickets because we were going that summer to Serbia. Yeah. And Tesla Travel was just a travel, Serbian travel agency. Got it. Okay. On the north side. Gotcha. And it was, uh, 
it was owned by uh, Petr Jovanovic, okay. who was referred to as Pera Tesla. Okay. Right? Gotcha. And at that time, he had a Serbian show on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, maybe even weekends. I don't even know what was going on. But every day of his show, he had a, he had a show on, it varies from a half an hour a day, you know, depending on whatever season it is, to three hours a day or four hours a day, right? Yeah. So uh, my grandfather and I are, this is my, mind you, this is like February, okay? And we go into Tesla travel and we're going to Tesla travel to pick up plane tickets. And then my dad, the Maulan Aporan, you know, I pushed him on I let my grand, you know, grandson play, you know, uh, you know, put him on the radio. I mean, man, my <laughs> dad was Malo, you know, come on. Yeah. So uh, for, for some crazy reason, uh, Pera Tesla was like, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll try it. We'll, we'll do like, you know, let them come and i remember the date i'll never forget the date it was, uh -huh. it was february 29th 1996 right leap year right uh -huh. so those 29ths don't come back you know don't come around too often and he's like yeah come then we can, we'll do a show a half hour show whatever now i was ecstatic i was you know but my but i had a language barrier it was difficult right because uh -huh. i didn't speak proper serbian right i spoke improper serbian english slash serbian serblish serblish but it, it was you know, it didn't, it was nowhere near where it needed to be, right? Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so February 20, 29th comes and here I go and I wind up doing a half an hour show, which I loved. I loved doing it. I just, you know, it was cool the music. I know what music I was wanting to listen to. I know what I, what I liked. And I was already listening oh. to to certain music at the time anyway, yeah. right? Through the, you know, at, at home or, or whatnot. And the show was an opportunity to, you know, Let's try it. Now, back then, you had you had limitations on what you could listen to, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have the YouTubes. Okay. We didn't have the social media uh, networks that we had that we have today. Mm -hmm. Rather, you you were limited in, in options, right? So, on a on daily basis, you were really limited, right, of what you could listen to, especially when it came to, like, you know, Nash program, right? Yeah. So, we started with that. And then, somehow, that turned into a, you know, hey, uh, you know, I'm busy on a certain day, and can you can you fill in for me, right? But it was a fill. You know how the you know, and, and I'm I'm excited. I'm beyond uh -huh. excited, right? But the fill in was okay. You play this music, you play these commercials, and you don't say anything. You can say dobar dan, dobar došli, and hvala vam što slušate. So he just, he just wanted you to press play <laughs> yes. and press stop. Totally. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Except on my show, you know the la the thirty minute slot I got in, uh, you know, on okay. Fridays, right? Uh huh. Uh, but that kept the frequency kept increasing mm -hmm. with the show, right? He had more obavezif, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Were you like, getting paid for this? I I think he would treat me to lunch. Okay, that was good enough for me, man. Right, right, right. I, I it was good enough for me. Yeah. So I just wanted to be on the radio. I liked radio, and this was an al alter uh, alternative to. FM radio, mm -hmm. right? It was to me. It was the next best thing. To right? put in the door. It, to a degree. To a degree. To a degree, right? So nobody, people on FM radio didn't care about people on AM radio that bought brokerage time. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They didn't. I see. Plus, in a different language, so it was, you know, that my goal wasn't to transition into back into English at that point. Mm. My focus was I'm going to do this. I like doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. So that's how that. And began. I bet, and I bet it was extra special because you were doing something for. Our community. Yeah, I, I just, it's just, just natural. Yeah. It's just natural. You know, it was, it was meant to be. And yeah, I mean, it was right after the war too. So, you know, there was, there was a, a source of pride. Yeah. You know, that, that came with doing that, that show as well. Yeah. So it was cool. It was, it was fun. It was entertaining. And then, oh my God, you know, <laughs> ridiculous, you know, uh -huh. when I in, incorrect grammar, uh -huh. that's a, it's a, what what kind of responses did you get when you, you know I mean all you, you know all we know is not the preach you know <laughs> you know they're all probably they were telling him I'm sure touch it to my mom don't bless him you know yeah. was, I was I was at uh, I was at the station once we were uh -huh. sitting at the um, so the station his uh, radio shows were broadcasted right next door to the travel agency mm -hmm. the studio was next door to the travel agency so. You know, when a show is not playing, you you would be going in the travel agent in in, in old like a baba would change the uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, he's you know he Pena likes to light fires. You know he he's a comic man. He's a comedian. He, you know definitely a comedian. He lost, he missed his calling right. Uh -huh. So he's sitting there and now what be the two babo? Like she's like, 
He's like, uh, what do you think of this? You know, all my mile. What's that mistletoe on you? And Papa goes, I'm sitting right here. Yeah. And, you know, and he knows the answer. I know he knows the answer. You know? and, and she goes, on a mali bless me. On a mali bless me. Poof. You know, like, you know. And, you know, I'm uh-huh. young. And I'm like upset. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, you know, I'm turning red, angry at this. There's this Baba talk because she doesn't know it's me. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's one of the benefits of radio at the time too. You, you know, you couldn't put a, there was no face. a face to the yes. name, right? <clears throat> so <laughs> I'm looking at her. I was so mad. <laughs> she walks out. Now he's dying of laughing. Yeah. Right. And I made a few comments there. Bravo! Whatever. So. She wasn't going to listen to my show yeah. anyway. So, but did you get any like, give me some positive reactions? Did you? What about the younger ge- generation? What did they think of you well, coming you have, on? Back then, the younger generation really didn't listen to AM radio mm. because AM radio was really made for their parents, for their Baba and Dada, right? Yeah. And the music that was played, younger people, ser- you know, didn't want to listen to. Yeah. Right. I mean, they knew the songs because you know you have the radio blasting in the background of your home when you're while you're walking. Right. 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 And then there, you know, those opportunities come where, uh, you know, they might walk by and hear a song and they're like, oh, "Who's this? What is this? This is good." And yeah. then that's how that began to build. Right? I see. Mostly, right. Mm. That's what I think potentially. But it, it wasn't a younger base that was listening to the radio. It was their parents yeah. or their grandparents. And the best part is, you know. What helped me later on was if I was DJing someplace before my website, mm-hmm. right, came up. What's your website? At that time, it was uh, spazdeck.com. Spazdeck, spazdeck, dude. I, I remember going on spazdeck.com yes. and you had the pictures up with how many views or likes yes. or something yes. on the bottom. Yeah, it was views. It was and views. bro, everybody was going to like, <laughs> I remember like checking my picture, you know, oh, let's see how many views we got, whatever. <laughs> And I was, I was like, it was upset. Spaz got us, <laughs> Spaz got us hooked on spazdeck.com. Thank you. So, so um, before the site came on, it, it was those Bob and Dad that would tell their grandkids. Yeah, leave it in a pravi, ko pravi. And then you know, remember, no social media, so they would go, "Hey, you hear about this party? Mm-hmm. Next thing, you know, what, you go into this thing. I heard, you know, and then." The room, you know, turns around. You know, word gets out. Yeah. yeah. What was where was your first party at, or how did the, how did you transition from radio and to throwing parties now? That's crazy, right? So I've never really left radio. Radio has always been in my, you know, uh-huh. on my itinerary. Always, I love radio. I love, I love. No, now it's called Facebook Live, or it's called Live right. podcasts, right? Uh huh. It it transitioned naturally. Uh, I had a friend at the time. His name was uh, Ivan Matic. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lived on the south side. Uh, today he's one of my Kumovi, right? Or Kumovi today. Uh-huh. And he told me that this little place in uh, South Chicago at the time called Kalamagdan was looking for a DJ to DJ. And I said, okay, let's check it out, right? So um, I go over there and the guy goes, yeah. Uh, it was probably May, June ish. And uh, summer picnics at South Chicago were a big thing back in the day, right? So Sunday nights at you know saint simeon sunday nights sunday nights every sunday every sunday from june to 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 september yeah right these picnics were rammed slammed amazing right yeah so um they wanted to do it because the picnics had to end at 10 p.m they wanted to do an after party till two Mm -hmm. so we go to kalamagda which is like 10 minutes from there and uh that individual uh who owned the place his name was radinovich gave me my first opportunity to work at a venue yeah right which i'm still very grateful for to, to, to this day right so he uh we we made a deal but remember i had nothing at the time i had no cds everything was transferring from tapes to cds at that time roughly mm-hmm. i had no cds all the music that i used at the radio station because by that time i, I was on radio for about a year more about a year and a half mm-hmm. by the time you know, every, everything, um, I had bought nothing of my own. I go to the radio to do the show. It All the CDs are uh, there. there, you know, the product of, you know, uh, Tom of the Leco Radio, yeah. you know. And so I had a couple of friends that lived right across the street. Uh, 
Dan and Dominic Troll. <laughs> Sorry, I got to do that again. It's Dan Gruich and mm -hmm. Dominic Gruich. They're brothers. They lived right across the street from Cullen back then. Okay. And they were kind enough to let me use their CDs. They had like those old CD towers, uh -huh. right? long towers. And every weekend after that, I go, I don't have CDs, guys. You know, you could use ours, you know. That was very nice of them. Yeah. Right? Were they in the in the business or no, they were just... No, that was just for their personal entertainment. Yeah. They want, they listen to certain music. They like, you know, they were buying CDs. Yeah. And at that time, I, I would go over there and I'd come back, you know, hold, holding a tower of CDs. <laughs> uh, I mean, legit, I mean, I'm not even joking when I say across the street. Like their, their house was, at, you know, across, you know, by the parking lot. Yeah. Right? So carry these CDs over. In fact, that was the time that burning CDs was a big, became a big thing. So <laughs> instead of carrying this tower over, uh, Dominic Dom, you know, burned, you know, 10 hit songs on uh -huh. one CD for me, you know? Uh -huh. So that, and then I started from there, I started purchasing my own things, my own CDs, my own music. And, you know, I'm very grateful to them, right? And you just Back, kind of built your... Right. You know, and I had no equipment. Remember, I mean, all the equipment that I was using at the time was of the venues. Yeah. Or of the stations, or or whatnot. Yeah. You know? So you know, my first, my first collection of first, you know, first ten or fifteen or twenty CDs that I purchased, or or had burned for me, I had brought in a shoebox. Uh -huh. You know, because don't know, you know. <laughs> so that's you know, we started doing those summer parties there. Um, it, they were very successful. I mean, we were slammed every Sunday. Yeah. September rolls around. Radanovich, the owner, goes, "I did was fucking weekend." And my reaction is like, come, nobody comes. Like it's nobody comes here after summer ends. You know, it's not like that. Uh huh. He goes, no, I find the problem. <clears throat> so. So after after summer, when the picnics are all done, the um, weather is not. The, the weather is even nice. Nobody comes. It's just it, it wasn't nisunavikli. They didn't. They were not accustomed to coming to South Chicago on a Sunday night in September, October, November. Mm hmm. So what happens was he goes, I doge. And uh, I said, okay. He wants me to work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> My question was the same. Come, Come yeah. You know, who am I going to work for? I mean, nobody's there. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, you know, at the time, early on, it was it was me. The owner was there. Radha was there. The bartender was there. And your one patron at the bar mm -hmm. who was older <laughs> and drinking. Yeah. And it was us four, us three, four. I mean, that was it. And so he wanted you to do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right. Well, he wanted to start with all three days, and then he realized at the end of September, Shabbat Zapata. Yeah. Doesn't want to throw money away, so just do Friday, Saturdays. So that's what happened. And then, uh, about a month in, no more. It was like October. Uh, my other kum, uh, Deki, mm -hmm. Dan Dekovic. Hence the name Spaz Deck, right? Mm. Reaches out to me and says, "Hey, let you know, let's do a party. Let's do a party. You know, whatever." Uh, and I'm like, "Okay, let's let's try it." So we we wind up making a a flyer, and at the time the event was called, you know, Yes in Yajurka, Yes mm -hmm. in Yajurka, mm -hmm. and man, it was flyers only, no social media, place is rammed, you know, 400 people show up. Mm. I'm shocked. He's shocked. We're all shocked, you know, and that begins the process of what was later known as Luder Rurke. Yeah. You know, we were able to do that. And then we wanted to, we did start doing that on a monthly basis. But the difference was, you know, those, those were identified Rurke where you advertise, right? Mm -hmm. But I was still there every weekend, right? So we do those once a month at Rurke. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody comes. Mm -hmm. So, those became what about the other nights when you thing. well again you were just you, there me and the four and that was it that, but at one at one point what happened was someone you know a group of younger people had nothing to do and they show up and i'll never forget i'll never forget that i was sitting in the thing in the booth uh -huh. expecting another regular saturday night and here come five six ten people I'm like <laughs> Kusobi. Yeah. And they, they, they just happened to be from Indiana, Northwest Indiana. It's like, hey, what's up? I'm like, and then it became more think. of a party. Uh -huh. You know, it was like just laid back, yeah. you know? And 
<laughs> now you might not be getting 400, but you're slowly working up to be getting like a regular 100. Regular, or regular group. Yeah, regular people. group. Yeah. yeah. So that's how that happened. And then every party, I mean, there was no, I mean, I think the first 10 years, there was no such thing as a, a bad party. Yeah. You know, like it was unbelievable. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. You know, you were there. Beach, 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 master. Right. Where were people coming from? You said it was in South Chicago. It Where were they South coming Chicago. from? So at, in the beginning, it was uh, Chicago and uh, Northwest Indiana. Mm -hmm. So Sherville, Maryville, Crown Point, uh, Munster at the time. Those people today live now in, you know, still St. John Dyer, um, Hebron, Lowell, you know, yeah. Maryville. It's still, you know, they kept going south, right? But they were coming from Northwest Indiana and chicago right mm -hmm. south chicago had a, a lot of a base of you know uh, serbian enclave there and then from the north side they came and then yeah. as the parties continued with time word travels and the next thing you know all of a sudden we have guests coming from milwaukee we have a lot of guests <laughs> coming from milwaukee consistently uh-huh we have guests coming from rockford you're like, they're driving two hours to get here. Yeah. Then the, those friendships form. Mm -hmm. And and out of those friendships, you know, today there are marriages mm -hmm. that have formed. And, you know, next thing you know, you know, it just, it just, it blows up. It blows up, yeah. yeah. It blows up. I mean, there, was there anything like this bef before those parties? You know. Where, was, there, was there a place for... 21 year olds to go somewhere and have a good time without their parents being around right the, from from a serbian point of view so, so i think it started a little bit younger i think it was more like you know 16 17 18 plus yeah right it, i'm not familiar with things like that um they had you know places like skadarlia today yeah you know and whatnot that had live music but there was no element that just had a DJ only. Yeah. This was, at least but that like, I'm aware of. Like when, when, yeah, you have Skadarlia, you had, you know, you had Zupa too. Sure. But as a, let's say 18 year old, as an 18 year old, if I was to go to Zupa, I, I know I can maybe sometimes see my dad there or, mm -hmm. you know, somebody, somebody else's parent or right. other, somebody else's dad. Um, but when I go to Aluda Zurka, I know that it's nothing but people my age, maybe, you know, give or take five years little bit older sometimes sure. um but i knew at your parties that it was nothing but you know people like myself yeah, see, that's, so that's i think that was the difference that's, that's news to me right yeah so it, most yeah that's what happened we were the only dj party yeah. in town yeah right we were the only dj party in town and that was known and for the most part um many parents i don't get me wrong not all parents but many parents felt comfortable sending their ch children right. there because they were coming uh, to an event that had all Serbs, yeah, right, and I understand that mm -hmm. uh, sense of comfort. Yeah, for sure. You know, it, I it mean, really it's, was. it's your own. You know, it's when you're when if your child tells you, "Oh, I'm going to a Serbian place," you know, <laughs> of course you're gonna feel a hundred times more comfortable than if they tell you, "I'm going to out to a club in the city." Right, absolutely, one million percent. You know what I mean? Right. So that's how that began. Uh, that's how that begins. Yeah. Right. And, and how long were you at, how um, how long were you a resident DJ at Kalamek then? So it's funny, you know, we when you define residency, I was only there until, you know, call it like 97 mm -hmm. to 99. Okay. And uh, early 99, spring 99, maybe actually a little bit later, right before summer hit, May, uh, we went to a uh, SNF basketball tournament in Detroit. And when we had started our parties in South Chicago, at the same time, mm -hmm. there was uh, another group that started parties in the city, and that uh, that was run by Sam Kappas mm -hmm. from Sam Kappas Productions. So he started parties in the city uh, at a place called Calisto, okay. which became Byzantium, okay. which no longer exists today. But by the way, parties, it's a shame. It is a shame because Byzantium <laughs> was the best. They was pomena su dobre, right? Bro, it was awesome there. So he began events there simultaneously, but it was a, 
a purely 21 and over crowd uh-huh. that went there. And we happened to be in Detroit at the same time for SNF basketball tournament. And I, I have, I mean, this is random as random. As, I mean, I, this is random. You would more, you, I was under the impression I would meet him at a function rather than a, a gas station in Detroit. Yeah. Cause I walked in to get something. He happened to be there or actually a friend of ours, Danny Vujovic was there. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I knew Danny high by and Danny introduced me to Sam and I knew Sam's name. Sam Kappas downtown, you know, yeah. right mm-hmm. at the time. Oh, I'm Spaz, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. He, he heard of me uh, because of Color Magdan and the events and uh, small talk, yeah. you know, let's communicate, let's touch base when we get back into this, you know, city and see what we can, you know, maneuver. Yeah. So it was it was cool because I met Sam Kappas in Detroit for, for the basketball tournament. At a gas that. station. Yeah, at a gas station, <laughs> you know. So, so he he was already doing Srpsko Grčko Veče. Yeah, so he was. Uh, but prior to that, he was doing events in Indiana, mm-hmm. connecting Serbs and Greeks. Okay. Right? At, at a small spot. So this was back in the day. So he's been around, I think he's, this is his 35th anniversary or maybe even, yeah, he's, he's up there okay. right, in years as far as anniversary goes. Mm-hmm. Right? He, he's been doing it for a long time. He has. And he, he was very successful at moving, you know, not only capturing Northwest Indiana, Serbs and Greeks, but mm-hmm. moving that into the city. And then he captured the entire market because, like I said, nothing like that had existed prior yeah. uh, to him doing it in the city or me even doing it in South Chicago. And it was simultaneous. The year I started at Kalamagdan is when he started at, I believe, Byzantium. I see. Or, I'm sorry, Kalisto at the time, which was later Byzantium. Gotcha, gotcha. So and then you guys teamed up eventually. So he called and invited me to, uh, you know, to guest perform. Um, I still I think I have that first flyer saved, you know, and I did. I went down there and we it worked and it was cool. And at the time he had a Serbian girl. Uh, at the time her name was Maria Ratic, uh-huh. Maria Markovic today, who was uh, referenced as DJ Soma, and she played the, the Serbian music at those events. Okay. So, you know, she was already filling the gap that he needed. Yeah. Right. I uh, just happened to be, like I said, guest spot a few times. I think after the second or third time, he he invites me to join the crew, and and the rest is and the rest is history. It, and we're still working together, you know, twenty five yeah. years later. Wow! Amazing. So that I mean, and alongside of having a you know somebody to work alongside with, but I'm sure you guys are also developed a for a friendship. Yeah, it, he, over, you know, over I've learned years. so much from Sam Kappas. Yeah, you know, three three people that I credit a lot of this to is uh, Petr Jovanovic, Pera Tesla for the radio mm-hmm. in the beginning, the opportunity. Mm-hmm. I'm very thankful to him. Uh, Rade Novovic, who owned Kalamagdan at the time, who allowed us to do these events, who called me to do, you know, to work there yeah. summers. And uh, Sam Kappas, who helped me with summer mixes and who helped me have a different perspective on things as yeah. well. So I've learned a lot from from these individuals, and I'm, I'm yeah. very th- thankful for that too. Yeah. And I mean that's and that's kind of my vision with this too. You know, mm-hmm. have people come on and talk about their careers, and then potentially have somebody reach out to you, right? Hey, you know, I'm interested in sure. doing this, so I have a few questions and in this and you know let's all help each other out um but before you started working with sam capas and throwing parties together and um did you uh, did you ever do anything on your own outside of kalmegdan no so the residency lasted from 97 to 99 Mm -hmm. and then when i started working with sam uh sam helped uh, produce the first summer mix which is now known as summer mix 99 once that summer mix hit, it was, it was. I mean, and what was that? Just the CD, CD. Just the CD. Yeah. Uh, well, he had cassette tapes too. So he had, he had a mix in '98 as well. Summer mix '98 that he called it, right? Serving Greek mix. Uh-huh. And then, um, I I was not a part of that one, but summer mix '99. Mm-hmm. You know, I participated in, and that really is what helped me put me on the map yeah right so for anybody that came in from out of town from detroit or from cleveland or who knows where you know they they would wind up purchasing these cds mm-hmm. 
and they take it back and all you hear you know every every third track is dj spaz you yeah. know taki z uh -huh. right you know uh dj vasco at the time so you know as a few years moved in uh, the macedonians uh there's a large macedonian community in northwest indiana mm -hmm. uh crown point specifically and they you know they had joined us in the parties they were coming to the parties anyway right right so we then we went to acknowledge them that let's was, give them a shout that out was, yeah of course yeah always and they came and then dj bosco my colleague a macedonian uh was with us in the beginning and then when he retired so to speak his brother dj itze uh spelled ice so people think it's dj ice but it was really dj itze uh, -huh. uh continued to play the macedonian music at the time and you know uh taki z was there and his brother uh pete feel the vibe right so those were they were siblings uh pete left early on taki stayed on quite a bit after mm -hmm. that and once summer mix came out it was a completely different ball game yeah you could you could tell there was something different in the air right because kalamagdan without our announced parties started having you know 100 people regularly right you know 100 I can't say 100 people, but let's say 100 people regularly. Sure. And that was amazing. So that all goes until 2000. Mm -hmm. And now I start getting, you know, so, you know, fall of 99, I start getting calls to go everywhere. And uh, I had a friend of mine in Detroit at the time. His name was uh, Big T, Tom. Mm -hmm. And Tommy called me and he, Tom's like, hey, let's do a party in Detroit. And I'm like, okay, where? Let's go do it at the hall, All right? So we go to Sveti Stefan Detransky in Warren. We rent the hall with the support of, you know, uh, the clergy at the time, which was Father Zhivko, mm -hmm. who I love very much. And he, uh, you know, he was happy that young people are doing something. Mm-hmm. So Big T rents the hall. We do the hall. The event is huge, massive. And that was the end of January. I remember this. It was the end of January. It was the, Friday, the last Friday in January of 2000. And we had over like 500 people at the hall. It was unbelievable. Uh -huh. It was unbelievable. It was just a good time. We brought, we had like an entourage that came from Chicago. So DJ Spaz, DJ Decky. Spaz deck. We mm -hmm. had uh, our 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 friend, uh, you know, DJ Hitman show up. We had there was six cars, man. There was like twenty four of us that came. Yeah, <laughs> in six different cars. You know, like it was crazy. And when we saw the, the turnout, it was you know my dad came. Yeah. You know, Tom's dad was there. They were you know at the front door, helping. Yeah. It was it was an amazing thing. I mean, I never envisioned this to be like this. I thought it was going to be kind of cool. You know, small get together, man. It was huge, and I think a lot of those people in Detroit were just as surprised of the turnout. Yeah. And then we and the and then Detroit became regular for a few years. Yeah. You know, we did that, and then but then different markets opened. Yeah, all of a sudden Cleveland opens. Uh huh. Right, Cleveland opened, and none of these pods that had a DJ. Well, they it, Detroit did. Detroit. Detroit did. had a, had a local DJ. But I'm sure, like bringing you over there to Detroit. You had people follow you, you know, to the party. I mean, and because like living in Chicago, you hear, oh, there's a party in Detroit. It's a, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a, it's a Serbian party. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of want to see who's living over there. You know, right. what, what people are living there that I don't know. Right. Um, so let me see what's going on. Right? So we did have that. Yeah. You know, people, I mean, it wasn't in, the, in those numbers, those crazy numbers, sure. but it was enough to help supplement that party. Right. Yeah. Um, they had even people from Cleveland. Cleveland was closer. Cleveland's like two hours away, two and a half hours away from Detroit. So a lot of people from Cleveland came to mm. Detroit. And then people from Chicago came. And then anybody that was left in like these smaller cities like Lansing, Michigan, who might have been there for school, right? Yeah. They also heard about it and showed up. So those Detroit parties were cool. I mean, the first one though was was legendary. Like that one is that one is <laughs> unforgettable, man. Do you have like pictures and I do, I from, do. From these parties. I do have pictures. You know, it's amazing because I, every so often I run into it. And it just, you know, next thing you know, it takes you down a rabbit hole because you're <laughs> clicking through these pictures. My goodness, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my God, we were so young. You know, it was great. It was, 
Lip Usman, and I'm yeah. glad they're documented. Now, I didn't have as much video as I would like to have, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of pictures because at the time I, w I brought a cameraman with me mm -hmm. uh, to do videos, or I'm sorry, to do photos at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, over all the places that you've thrown Lula Jurke at, I mean, we have Byzantium <laughs> and we have. Um, I know the avenue here, here uh, in Oak, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think maybe there was a one or two there. Yeah, it was, it was couple, that was one year, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was a good one. And Marchetti's. Marchetti's. Wow. You remember What that else one? did we got? Apo in the city. Apollo. Apollo came later. Yeah. Apollo. There was Galeria. Galeria. I mean. Man, those were some good times. <laughs> and it's great. It's funny that you mentioned all those, right? When someone comes up to me and says, oh my God, we had such good times. I wait for them to say the location that they remember the most. Uh -huh. And with that location, they identified what generation they were with, mm. right? Because the Kalamegan generation, by the time Apollo came around, they were all older, Yeah. right? They, they moved on to, um, you know, Serbian Kafane. Right. You know, and, but they would then show up to the events that we have downtown, Yeah. you know, to the Excalibur mm -hmm. events, to the Vision to the you know white star events those mm -hmm. events you know someone says apollo that's another generation eight years younger yeah, yeah. you know so it was interesting to hear when they say you know xyz whatever yeah you you kind of know with every venue who was there what Absolutely. generation yeah it's it, that's kind of cool yeah you know? that I, is so cool. i'm able I, I have a, a marker yeah that can help me identify what generation that was which which <laughs> venue was your favorite you know a couple, I'm sure you had plenty of yeah, favorite ones, but yeah. which one was the ones that are most memorable the, to you? Well, talking about venue itself, uh -huh. there was an, a venue in downtown Toronto that was the most amazing venue I have ever seen in my life. And it was an old indoor mall. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember the name nor is it even called that today. I don't even know, I don't even think it exists today. But that venue in Toronto. I mean, they had escalators going up. I mean, it was just it was an indoor mall. Yeah. It was like Woodfield. You know, with, mm. with, with that, you know, the center of Woodfield with just a nightclub. <laughs> that was probably one of my most, you know, wow. It's like one of those things you see at the movies. Yes. When you walk in, there's just uh, like the almost, yeah. you know, almost like a Vegas style. Yeah nightclub that i was performing at that was yeah. that was that was amazing how many um how did a party do there oh i mean you know i was you know those promoters up there you know early on it was sir party uh, uh -huh. that did it uh george and zoran they were amazing 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 and then later on it was uh, absolute entertainment which is still around today mm. they it was an absolute this was an absolute event that had it uh, that hosted this venue that I'm talking to you about, uh, speaking to you about now. Yeah, I mean, absolute. You know, I, I mean, the name is perfect. Absolute entertainment. Yeah. From venue, from I mean, it was good. Yeah. So nice. that, that that venue, I still can't get out of my head. Right. <laughs> is it Lucky still to around? Play? No, I don't think it is. No. No, I, I don't think it is. But the Toronto scene has changed generally too. Yeah. The big nightclubs are gone. It's you know mostly residential. There's not too many places oh, really? like they used to be, uh, you know that that were around back in the day. Yeah, I want. Well, I mean things change. I mean even they around do. here, we see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about in Chicago? Which one was like your? All right, I like this place. This is a lot of fun. Well, I'm not talking about like the venue itself, but like the energy, right? The energy of the party. You know, every party has a unique energy. Right, so it could be the smallest place, uh -huh. but the fun is the Jurka. It could be a blast, the energy, the screaming. You know, like the one one event that I can't get out of my head. We have we have video. A we have video footage of it. Mm -hmm. B we have photos from it. Right, it was Excalibur, uh, Serbiada, like twenty twelve. I mean, people were hanging from the rafters. I mean, it was such an energy there. And ex just for the people that don't know, Excalibur it was cat or it oh. was Castle after. Oh right, sorry. It was Castle after Excalibur, and then now it's Tau. Tau, it's right. the, in Chicago's Tau nightclub. And I remember when you hear about a party at Excalibur, I was like, 
fuck how am i gonna get in you know what i mean like that's that's a tough one to get into i, I gotta figure something out right. i gotta call somebody <laughs> it was but that, that i like that that was a good venue that, that throughout the years yeah. that you were but there that one that one 2012 said beyond the weekend mm -hmm. was it wasn't only said beyond that which was crazy right because that weekend it just happened to uh coincide with the Macedonian convention, right? Macedonians have a convention every year. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that's still the case, but I'm under the impression that it is, Mac convention, and they happen to be in Indiana at the same time Serbiada was in Chicago. Mm. That was, I mean, the vape of the Ljudi. I mean, two and a half thousand people. Yeah. I mean, it was just an amazing, an amazing, amazing event. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. That was, that, that <laughs> you know it was one of the best that i can recall so yeah um so with all the parties that you were doing right how did you transition into concerts how did that become of your uh, become part of your so petri ovalovic pera tesla uh -huh. who had the radio he was also a concert promoter at the time or not at the time was the concert promoter right right there were other promoters but he was the main concert promoter in the city and then he would book these acts. Mm -hmm. And then I would, I don't know, by default, become opening act or someone in, you know, see. that does breaks. And then I would travel with them to all these other cities, mm -hmm. which just helps solidify, you know, name recognition mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So that's, that's how I got into that concert world because... Pera Tesla was already in the world. Yeah. Right. So it, it went hand in hand. I'm I'm sure that was exciting for you. It was that man. you were now starting to go on tour. It was it was cool. Would, um, I think, you know, the, the the first concert that was really, you know, big for me, mm -hmm. um, was 2002. I think was Rafko Trolić. That was the first time I ever worked with Rafko Trolić, mm -hmm. and that was cool was great i mean of course it's a packed concert right but the one that kind of really sticks in my head was uh Željko Joksimovic. Željko Joksimovic in like oh three was that after he won no no prior prior Pre before that you know you're talking about the uh, eurovision eurovision yeah yes. no he was before that yeah but he had that album out uh vreteno uh plavo i mean he was like the act, right? The act, yeah. And being with uh, him on, in, on tour was just beyond amazing. It was just, I mean, both. I mean, think about it. Zdravko Trolić and yeah. Yoksimovic. And then through the years, you know, you get lucky. You know, you're, you're, you're on concert tour with legendary names. Right. You know, again, I've been lucky enough to work with Zdravko Trolić. Mm-hmm. Željko Iksimović, Lepa Brena, Riblja Čorva, mm -hmm. Parni Valjak. And these are all the people you probably grew up listening to? Not all. Not all. I learned about a lot of them. I mean, I wasn't a rock pop guy. I only know one song uh, or two songs, you know. You know, all that, you know, transitions, you learn more about these people. You learn that there's different genres of music, right? You know, just my genre was early on heavy turbo folk. Yeah. Sek Alexic, Indira Radic, Mila Kitic, mm -hmm. Vicky Milkovic, you know, naturally Tsetsa, right? Right. You know, so. Did you... Um... Lucas. Oh, yeah. For He's sure. a trip I mean... too, man. He's a trip. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Um, do you... I, I know if you're into Serbian music, but do you... Did you follow growing up? Did you listen to any American music, any American bands? or? You know, I didn't. You know, in my house, you know, in the background, you know, blaring all day, you know, was uh, Zvonko Bogdan, Tozovac, Brena. Uh -huh. You know, I grew up with my Bob and Dada. See, so. I'm I'm uh, I'm surprised you didn't listen to an American because you wanted to be a disc jockey for like right. B B96. Right, but that's only because you know I listened to them talking on the radio. Oh yeah, and then when the song goes on, I don't really pay attention. Yeah, you just wanted to. You know, I was just listening to how they. Kakovode program. Right. You know? And at that time, I remember it was Eddie V and Joe Bo with the morning shows, you know? So. They went on for a while. Because I, re I remember they, listening to them 
Like on my way to high school. Yeah, and but and then they left, and then they came back. Yeah, there was a. <laughs> they were they were a fun time. They were. It's different, you know. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. You know, I guess I enjoyed quite a few. I did, you know, listening to different morning shows. But though, I mean, they were like the hot thing at the time. So yeah, you know, B ninety six. Yeah, <laughs> they're still around, and right. all these other chat um, stations. But um, what other things are you involved with? I know, I know, you're a busy man. Uh, and I'm not saying that in a joking way, but what other things are you involved in within the Serbian community? Not just when it comes to music and throwing these events. You know, I've been very involved with the church. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, grew up at Holy Resurrection uh, on the northwest side. That's Redwood. That is Redwood. 5701 North Redwood Drive. Give a right. shout out. <laughs> so, yeah, grew up at Redwood. My entire life revolved really around the church mm -hmm. and its activities. So I'm still very involved there. Mm -hmm. Continue to, uh, to serve there um, on the board this year. I was president one year of the church. That, what year was that? 15, 2015. Okay. You know, that was a trust, you know. For sure. Because that was something I've always wanted to do. And I think I've I put my heart and soul in making sure that I carried, or at least attempted to carry the baton from the Starosedioci that helped build that place. Yeah. Right? I am, Bo, I am beyond thankful yeah. to all those people that put in their sweat, blood, and sweat, blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. to help establish this parish. Because today my children are the beneficiaries of their hard work yeah right and that's at the parish level the same goes you know to the, to the founders of Gratranitsa St. Mm -hmm. Sava Libertyville mm -hmm. through those camps that they offered yeah uh, and every parish has that story too right yeah but you know I my my children are beneficiaries of the hard work that Sada said they would see put in and I will never forget that i'm going to make sure my children are very aware of yeah. who helped us get to this place those you know that old saying right the senika mm -hmm. and i'm going to do everything i can to make sure my children know who these people were mm -hmm. what they did to uh, get us to where we are today yeah get us to kind of be all a little right. bit more together right, right. So and, that I mean, when it comes to the church thing, I'm, that's where I'm involved in on that end. Mm -hmm. And you're on the board currently. You currently, yeah, okay. I'm involved in, you know, some local neighborhood things. I, I served on the local school council okay. of a high school uh, on the northwest side uh, as a community met rep for over ten years. Again, it's something about it's about giving back, yeah. you know, participating in the whole, <laughs> pay it forward, you know. Yeah. And then um, locally. Uh, I'm involved politically okay. because you know what? People don't believe it, but all these elected officials, their decisions directly affect us. In be what through, way? Well, be it through taxes, okay. your gas tax, your sales tax, your income tax. I mean, it all affects us at the end of the day. Yeah. And people are so turned off today by, by that, that nobody wants to participate in it. And I don't agree there. I think we all need to at least say our part. Mm -hmm. have a discussion a voice a discussion discussion you know you could you can think differently i can think differently but if we have that discussion or a forum to be able to have civilized discussions right. that's a good start yeah okay that's a good start but because that didn't exist for so long i think that's part of the problem uh that we're having today you know people are fed up they're tired mm -hmm. they feel uh you know, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what are <laughs> yeah. what are some, yeah, yeah. what are what are some of your accomplishments that you're most proud of, or oh man, that you're you know you you can say you know I was part of that. I know we just kind of talked about you being on on the as a president on on right. Or, you right know, those board. are bucket lists, right? That's yeah. a bucket list, right? You know, that was something I wanted to do. That's, to me, that was an accomplishment, mm -hmm. you know. But don't think that didn't hurt me um, on, on, the, on the business side, right? Mm. Because when you stand for something, 
and you have opinions and you are in a position to help um, how do I word this when you are in a position to help follow through on what you believe in mm -hmm. somebody will always be in disagreement with you mm -hmm. right so because I stood for something because I believed in taking this route to whatever that goal may be mm -hmm. there were people who disagreed with that route and, and this is you're talking about when as a as a part of the um, the committee at um, at Redwood or right, just, you know, like, you know, like, yeah like any anywhere right so you you know my market is is Nashi. No. You know, I think yeah. And because, you know, I mean, 95% is Serbian, right? You're in the community. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people are people who would potentially call you for a graduation, a birthday, a christening, a wedding, an event, mm -hmm. right? But if you take a stance uh, on, a, on, on, a, a, on a certain topic, on a topic yeah. That they disagree with, well, you hurt you hurt yourself. They right? might not call you, right? Yeah, you hurt you hurt yourself. But at that point, it's okay because you you believe in the cause, you believe in the greater good, you believe in that route is Zaboya Sutra, mm -hmm. in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? But even they couldn't hurt. They've hurt me, right? Uh, because they wouldn't call me, mm -hmm. or they would badmouth me, which is you know, sure common when you're in a, in a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. But I, I would, because my network is so wide, you know, you felt the hit, but it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't make me fold, right? I don't know how to explain that. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't cripple me, mm -hmm. right? And at the time that I did become president in 15, that year also, my video came out. My music video with Vicky Mitkovic came out. I do remember you being in the music video. You know, I wasn't sure if I should ask about that video. I was just kind of letting you yeah, bring it up. Yeah, you know that music video. That was helped. pretty cool, though. Thank you. <laughs> and I remember you had a uh, Blackhawks jersey. I on, did right? Chicago, That's right, baby. That's it's right. It's all Chicago. That's right. So, yeah, that video really helped me. She helped me. Mm -hmm. If there's two people in this industry, in the music industry, that helped me succeed, Vicky Mitkovic is one of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, by giving me the opportunity to have the song with her. Mm -hmm. And it was Mila Kitic who had given me the opportunity to work with him uh, throughout Europe. Yeah. That was huge. So you worked with him in Europe? Yeah. No shit. It was great, man. It was great. I See, knew. I didn't know this about, uh, yeah, about it was, you. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, I've, you know, Bech, City, uh -huh. you know, Vienna, uh, Zurich, uh, Slovenia. You know, I mean, it was just great. How long? Uh, how long was that for? How long? So did I last? did two different tours with him, right? I did two different tours with him, and uh, that was you know two weeks at a time, right? So two weeks, four events, another two weeks, another four events, mm -hmm. you know, and they were they were great. Yeah. People who like him love him. Yeah. You know, and Vicky, I mean, the doors open because it was easier for me to be able to work with him because I had a music video now behind me. Yeah. Right. We. 10 million views. I mean, wow. to some, that's not much. To me, it's... <laughs> what do you mean that's not well, much? Well, I mean, to some people, I mean, there are other people who are getting 30, 40, 50, 100 million views, right? Sure. 10 million views is huge to me, yeah. right? So that that helps a lot. That's crazy. Just just to think about that, 10 million people uh, well, listened. I must have done at least two, song. three million myself. How many yeah, times that's I right, baby. <laughs> watched it, right? That's... <laughs> because I couldn't believe it, you know? Yeah. It was just another thing on the bucket list, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of surreal, you know, it's when you think about where you started and, you know, all Definitely. the other, all the things that you've done and experienced and places you've traveled. Like, I had no idea you were in Europe. It was crazy. It, it's, it's, I've been lucky, man. That's cool, man. That's right, very cool. Right place, right time, really. I think that was what helped me. Yeah. You know? So... You know, when you're the first one out of the gate, that helps a lot all the time. Yeah. You know, and my God, it's been a great ride. Now, don't get me wrong. it It's not been, you know, a, a smooth ride. Of course. It's been, you know, bumpy, mm -hmm. obstacles, mm -hmm. multiple obstacles. 
you know, difficulties that people don't even see behind the scenes. Yeah. But that's all part of the ride, right? For everything. Some for of those, yeah, some of those obstacles and those bumps, when you look back, probably makes it more fun, right? If without those bumps <laughs> and those obstacles. I, I'll, I'll pass on a few of them, I promise you. <laughs> I'll pass on a few of them. But. Maybe on a few, maybe on a few, but uh, like <laughs> I, I look at, you know, just life in general and some of some of the hard points in your life or p hard periods of your life you look back at them and you're like well you know you learn from it and sometimes they were fun too you know even even though you the struggle was there sure when you look back now <laughs> or you look well, yeah, after, maybe when you look back now, after yeah yeah and a long period of time has passed you know <laughs> i mean there's some stories just unbelievable <clears throat> unbelievable so. yeah I mean, when when we sit down to eat again, I want to hear some of these stories. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. What um what's what's in the pipeline for you, man? What do you what do you what's the next big project that you know, you're working on? Those are great. That's a great what, question. What's what's your goal? Uh great question. Right. I don't know. I'm in a I'm in a position to now to figure out which route you want to take. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not single and 21 anymore right right, right. you have a family now uh, three kids mm -hmm. young some crucial years are coming up for them mm -hmm. those are very important questions that i'm still trying to figure out myself you know yeah i don't know how long the djing can really uh, continue as you get older it sure. becomes more difficult how these singers do it you know more credit to them yeah you know Bora Chorba man I mean Rivda Chorba I mean they're still killing it you know sorry um it's just you know there's many options on the table for me mm -hmm. be it a political route that's something that's you know I've always wanted to do mm -hmm. I run for elected office I and win <laughs> what do you mean by elective office what meaning is... well a place that I know I can make a difference in right so is it like so, in your city in your town well a lot of these things, it's timing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can run for aldermen and have, you know, a real impact with garbage cans and people's talking about people talking about potholes and mm. you know daily complaints. Uh, you can look to Congress and try to help change federal law, mm -hmm. you know. But all these things take a lot of commitment and time and financial uh, support mm -hmm. to accomplish. And, you know, I ran for a local school board election, a, a local school council election, and we were lucky enough to be able to defeat a 21-year incumbent. Mm. A 21-year incumbent. Wow. It was huge for us. And Nobody that person was there for 21 years? 21 years. And what was their position? Uh, he was a community member of a local school council. Okay, okay. You know? And I only ran to help make the school better. And we tried. Mm -hmm. We tried. And we did. So I know when I walked into that council 10 years ago, and I left that council 10 years later, I know the school was in a better place. Now, am I taking credit for that alone? No. It was the administration who ultimately made that school better. Right. But I know I was part of the process because we are the ones who elected. Mm. We as the council elected that principal. Mm-hmm. We are the ones who made those decisions that ultimately brought these results, right? Mm -hmm. It's all connected. But, the, you know, the nitty gritty that everyday stuff came from that administration. Yeah. And those teachers, you know. Yeah. And you know. were there for 10 years, you said? 10 years. Wow, yeah. man. 10 years. Five elections, man. Every two years there was an election. Wow. Oof. I never had the opportunity to not run a post. <laughs> Always <laughs> somebody wanting to run, yeah. you know. And that's good. Uh -huh. That's good. And because I we want people to run. Because if you run unopposed, you get comfortable. Complacent. What does that mean, run unopposed? Meaning oh, somebody, somebody runs against you. Against you. you. Yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. So that that's a big thing. So that that those alternative, you know, those options are those options mm -hmm. are uh, Do you think Serbians need to be more involved politically? Of course. You don't think we're involved enough? Of course. Absolutely not. Yeah. I know I, I mean I've told you that absolutely not i feel like i need to be a little bit more involved too and you could start almost immediately by registering yeah. if you're not registered vote register an election's coming up yeah this year's election is june 28th it's either of them the mm -hmm. primary is june 28th in illinois mm -hmm. Allo. 
Right. It, you know, it doesn't cost you much to go in and vote. Yeah. Just do it. You know, and then we hear that saying, ah, but don't understand that. Ah, it's not bad. You know, well, guess what? You know, yeah. it does. If we all, yeah, yeah. We are a force to be reckoned with if we all um, decide to join the action. I've seen it myself. So I know I agree with you. We are a force to be reckoned with as a community. But what's missing? Is there some, do you feel like something's missing? in our community what can improve I think and i ask you because you're involved right you're very involved to with, it, yeah thank you so in your eyes what what can we improve on as, it, as it's, a community it's multiple issues you know we, we we have to learn to communicate better uh -huh. we have to learn to allow ourselves to hear a different perspective mm -hmm. that's a huge thing that's a huge component. If we allow ourselves to know that, okay, maybe this person will disagree with me, but let's find our common denominators. Right. With those common denominators, we can do so much. I'm telling you, we can do so much. Yeah. And we might not, we might not uh, play a role in the larger offices, right? Mm -hmm. Of, you know, maybe the presidency, but in these- But with time. With time, you know, potentially, but in these local elections, I, I and I include, you know, alderman, county commissioner, uh, state rep, state senator, where the districts are smaller. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now that our vote can count because we are as spread out as we are. Mm -hmm. Our community is living enclaves, right? So you have a community in Brookfield, Lyons, mm -hmm. Willowbrook, LaGrange. Guess what? That's one state senate district. You have communities on the northwest side of, uh, you know, Edison Park, Chicago, uh, Norwood Park, Chicago, Harwood Heights, Norwich, mm -hmm. right? Niles, Park Ridge. We have enclaves there, my friend. Mm. And we can make things happen, especially when the elections are close. Yeah. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen a guy win by 40, 40 votes. Yeah. I've seen another guy win by nine votes. We we can make a difference yeah. for sure, That's especially true. in the smaller elections. When I say smaller, you know, a a mayoral, uh, village mayoral race mm -hmm. or village council race or something of, you know, sure. of that nature. It, we do. We make a difference. We just kind of, kind of convince ourselves to come out and vote. Not, I know. Pustito. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I it's it. not a waste of time. Oh, you know? you know. And then when I try to tell people, TC Politicra. TC Politicra. Hello. Paco some Politicra. TB Vich Glasso Desa Puta Dosat. Yeah. Means I'm not a Politicra because I can't convince you to even come out and vote. Right. 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 And there's, there's people that I tell, just vote. Who do you want me to vote for? I don't care. Right. Just vote. Just start getting into the habit of voting. Yeah. I mean, I do care, but if you're not going to listen to me anyway, just come out and vote. Yeah. You know, don't think that they're not watching who comes out and votes. They are very, very aware of who comes out to mm. vote. This you mean, when you is, say it by day, you mean the government. The establishment. The establishment. The establishment. They, they got this down to a science yeah. almost, man. They're good. They're great. That's why they continue to be elected and reelected, mm. you know, it's really good. It's, I mean, meaning it's a really good system that they have going for them. For sure. For right? sure. I mean, and if you're in their position, you got to keep an eye on all those things. Just like anything. You gotta, you Just gotta, like anything. You got to keep an eye on right? everything. So, uh, man, I had a great time. I don't know about you, <laughs> but I had a great time talking with, to you. Thank you. Likewise. I appreciate that. I, um, I think it was a, it was a good time. I think we touched on a lot of different topics, and I I definitely got to know you a little bit better, and um, I definitely look forward to continuing our friendship. It uh, um it took coach. thank you. It took about ten fifteen years for us to sit down and talk. <laughs> it did, <right? laughs> but that's I mean, it's very um, common, unfortunately. Yeah, but I 
thanks man for coming on i hope you had a good time and i hope you come back on eventually in in a year or or less um, well i hope your show grows to massive numbers i hope you have over two million followers and i hope you uh, i hope your bucket list and goals come true thank right. you come through come true come through i hope it happens at the end thank of the you. day and thank you, uh, that'll be even better to yeah. come to talk to two million people and then i can rant and rave about everything <laughs> <laughs> so i think i'm gonna use that little like five second <laughs> as a, like, a little, little, as a little video that. like a gif or something <laughs> or a meme or something I, yes that'll be yeah i would be surprised you know but i'll send it to you first to approve <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it's fun uh not but do get the you. word out and do what oh, you need to do to make it better and if you know if if there's any way i can help you out and any of your future projects um if if i can be of any help man just let me know and i look forward to continuing our friendship thank you sir and that there's so many things to work on in this life that's crazy there's so man. many things to work on. life is fucked up in a way it's fun true then true then true then you it so i'll probably take that out too <laughs> <laughs> so but thanks man i let's Let's That's see where it goes yeah. from here Gosh. and I can I look forward to our friendship, man. Yeah. I hope you had a good time, man. Thanks. You know what? I have one one last thing. I and you can put this Go in ahead. and clip it in. Yeah. The success I have not only came from hard work and struggles, mm -hmm. but the success I had came from people like you. People that came to these events. People that supported me for so many years mm -hmm. and they need to be acknowledged and to them to say i'm grateful is an understatement mm -hmm. words can't describe the feeling of zahwalnost that i have for these people mm -hmm. and i think it's very important that that people know that well thank you from 99 to 2022 to 20, and further that's your book all right perfect just, way to close it man i just wanted to make sure that's out there perfect way to close so, it so all right thank you spes thank you until next time until next time